the pop inhibitor is probably the hottest class of drug nowadays. Everybody's speaking about that. And uh, basically that, that's that been speaking about three to four drug, Olaparib, the most well-known, uh, Niraparib, Recaparib, and uh, more recently, Talozaparib. So I think that uh, it, it's important it trying to make it clear for the uh, physician because when you've got so many trials, it goes in every direction. So I think that the first step is really to make a difference between patients who do progress when they have already received abiraterone or enzalutamide or apalutamide. This is what I call the intensified metastatic CRPC. They have received androgen deprivation therapy. They are progressing uh, on abiraterone or enzalutamide or whatever. And there are no multiple options. You can give chemotherapy, you can give pop inhibitor, you can give PSMA lutetium. I really believe that these patients should be tested for DNA repair mutation because if they carry out a BRCA1, BRCA2 mutation, they should receive at the present time Olaparib 300 milligram BID. This should be the standard of care because the effect is major, both on progression and on override survival. And in that group of patients with a huge benefit, toxicity, which is always the same, it's anemia, alopecia, and nausea is easy to manage. The problem comes that uh, in a few, uh, in the last few, one to two years, we had result of trial who actually treated patients while progressing just on androgen deprivation therapy. Uh, they may be becoming less frequent, but they still do exist. And then we have two big trial uh, that show that actually you can start up front a combination of either abiraterone or alaprip or enzalutamide and talazaprip in a agnostic way. So meaning not having even test your patient because uh, there is a benefit in PFS and in OS. The benefit is not huge, but it's statistically significant and enough that it has been no accepted by like FDA on EMA. So for me, the, for me, the question is really not about the benefit of the combination. It's clear, but it's about, are we ready to give it to everybody or should we test the patient uh, to really select those who benefit the most? And I think that, um, uh, when you look at the trial, you see that clearly the patient who benefit the most are the BRCA1, BRCA2, and then you've got all the others. And I think that actually uh, we, we can do it without testing, but we, we, we have here one of the greatest biomarker and not using it may eventually result in exposing patient to a severe side effect and not knowing whether he's got major benefit or not. So if that patient had BRCA1, BRCA2, once again, we have a new standard of care. If your patients start developing severe anemia, fatigue, whatever, and you don't know what is the real benefit for that patient, I mean, I don't believe it's a good idea to go in a totally agnostic. So I believe that although the results are very encouraging, uh, testing should still be the rule in these patients and then really tailoring based on what you find on the testing.